Chapter 5, Asset Life Cycle Management, Continued Use. Once we have control of an asset, we enter the asset in a construct that records, tracks, stores, monitors, and maintains the asset. Its continued use requirements may require digital or physical storage, subjective or literal maintenance, record of impact on sales or actual sales, software or hardware updates, etc. These types of requirements are not a surprise but were identified in our research phase. There may be some factors that may arise over the course of continued use. These factors or issues should also be documented for future review. It is only through the use of the asset over time that you are able to assess its continued value. We have confidence in the assets we create and acquire and that we use them in our daily operations. Our services encompass all that we use to carry our projects and different types of work. If it works for us, we pass it on to our client base. If it doesn't work with us, we try to figure out why it doesn't fit. If it doesn't fit for us, doesn't mean it doesn't work. We try to identify what the problem is and whether or not we are in the position to fix it or to match it with a different type of situation. Everything design has a point of fatigue. Don't be surprised when a creation gets phased out or a piece of equipment breaks down. As an owner, manager, or administrator, we should be knowledgeable about the facts of managing change in our organizational constructs, either small or large. It's an ongoing balancing act. Technology is causing industry changes in so many respects. It is keeping us all on our toes. If you want to stay relevant, you must manage that fatigue in your asset, your organization, and even in yourself. There is a balancing act between service, product, and business that must be met each fiscal year. Our premise for the 10 core assessments and service is that we believe that owners, managers, and administrators who have the infrastructure for viable management systems that work for them preserve themselves for the more important projects and work in their organizational constructs. Statistics support that lack of pre-planning and putting the appropriate infrastructure in place prior to launch is among the top reasons why there is failure in business ownership. It has also been proven that of the national count of small businesses, there is a majority number of self-employed or non-employer small businesses with an average median revenue of 44,000 and 50% 50 of which are home-based. There are a lot of businesses who have a good product or service and are making good money, yet they still fail before the fifth to eighth year in business. It is a 40% chance that businesses will survive past this stage. It has become important to us to provide resources like the Universal Language Management Series to assist owners, managers, and administrators in beating the odds and creating sustainable value for their business, company, or organization so that it can continue to a planned 